It's Petey with PHNX, and it's time for another Petey's Puck Talk. Today on Petey's Puck Talk, we're going to take a deeper dive into the power play drop pass breakout. All 32 teams in the NHL use some form of the drop pass when executing a power play breakout. When it's executed properly, it's an effective way to gain possession in the offensive zone. It can even create scoring chances off of the rush. But when it's not executed properly, it slows down the power play, creates turnovers, and even causes scoring chances against. So before we start, I just want to explain to those new to hockey what a breakout is. So the breakout is when you get the puck and you break it out of your defensive zone in an attempt to gain possession of the puck in the offensive zone. And in a power play breakout, it's the exact same thing, but when the opponent has one of their players in the penalty box. Well, it's time. Let's take a deeper dive into the power play drop pass breakout. The power play drop pass breakout is used in some form or another by all 32 teams in the National Hockey League. When it's executed properly, the speed catches the penalty killer flat-footed so he can gain possession in the offensive zone or sometimes take a crack at the net. So let's take a deeper look at what's trying to happen here. The whole goal here is to get the quarterback, to get everybody moving backwards, and catch the late speed, getting the puck through the neutral zone quickly. So let's go one at a time. The quarterback's going to carry the puck up the ice, and he wants to get the penalty killers moving backwards through the neutral zone so that when he drops the pass, The penalty killers have to stop, and it freezes them, making them flat-footed. So you're going to see it here where the quarterback drops the puck, and it has to penalty killer stopping and regapping up, which creates all of this speed going against players that are standing still. And that's the goal of the power play drop pass breakout. You're going to see it here again where they drop it to speed, the quarterback drops it to speed, and the Boston Bruins are able to attack the zone. But one thing the quarterback has to be able to do, you need an experienced puck handler that knows when you need to bypass the drop pass. Sometimes the drop pass isn't the best play. You need to bypass it and attack the net on the offensive zone. You're going to see it again here where Hughes for the Vancouver Canucks recognized the best play isn't the drop pass. The best play is a stretch play that creates an opportunity at the net for the Vancouver Canucks. Next, you need the flankers. They're the two post-up guys. They create an outlet option for the quarterback in case he has to bypass the drop pass. They're also going to be very important by the time the puck reaches the blue line. You're going to see it here where the flankers, they come just past the red line so they can gain speed as the speed catches up to them so everybody reaches the blue line with their feet moving. And you notice that the Toronto Maple Leafs, they get the puck to the flanker, and the flanker is the one that actually drops the puck back to the speed. And that can be effective because you can see here, when they drop it off to the flanker, it attracts attention from the penalty killers, which gives a lot more room to the the drop pass speed to attack the zone at the blue line. And it allows the Toronto Maple Leafs to get a goal against the Buffalo Sabres. Lastly, we have to talk about the late speed. You're going to talk about two players inside the dots. They're going to be parallel, and they're going to attack with speed. You want high-skilled players that can weave their way through the penalty killers and get the puck into the offensive zone. You want the late speed to catch the penalty killers stopped and with their momentum carrying them the other way. So you're going to see it here where the late speed is between the dots and parallel as they attack the penalty killers flat-footed and get them backing off, which allows a lot more room at the top of the zone for the New Jersey Devils to set up their power play here. You're going to see it again where the late speed backs off the penalty killers, and when you back up the penalty killers like that, you create a lot of room to set up your power play on the top of the zone. But there are some teams that have so much high-end skill that they don't need two players on the drop pass. They use one. And here's Nathan McKinnon as the one player late speed. His responsibility is to use his speed to drive back the penalty killers and create room for the power play across the blue line. You're going to see it again here with one of the fastest players in the world with Connor McDavid as a single drop pass option. And he uses his speed to drive back the penalty killers of the Vegas Golden Knights and gets them going one way as he's going the other, and it opens up all kinds of room at the top of the zone for the Edmonton Oilers to set up their power play. 
When you reach the blue line, you want to be in four lanes. You want to have two players inside the dots, two players outside the dots. And they should all have their feet moving to create speed. You want to have four lanes at the blue line against three penalty killers. And you want a two-on-one, a penalty killer at the blue line. So it should look like this when you attack the zone. You should have all four lanes covered, and you should be two on one -ing one of the penalty killers at the blue line. You're going to see it again here by the Devils attacking with speed. Two players inside the dots, two players outside the dots, and try to two-on-one the penalty killer at the blue line. You're going to see it by the Boston Bruins. Again, four lanes covered. Attack two-on-one against the Detroit penalty killer. And this time they use the weak side of the ice. Now you have to finish your routes. What does that mean when you finish your routes? That means the speed has to continue to drive the net, which continues to push back the penalty killers as you get across the blue line. So you need to drive them, and you might be able to take a crack at the net if you finish your routes at the net. You're going to see it here by the Boston Bruins. And the player finishes his route driving the net, which gives the Boston Bruins an opportunity at the net on the power play breakout. You also create room at the back of the power play at the blue line if you continue to drop and use your speed at the blue end. You're going to see the Devils. They drive the Islanders back, which creates all kinds of room at the top of the power play for the New Jersey Devils to operate in the top of the zone. The other thing you can do is you can use the weak side. So you get across the zone, you drive the penalty killers back, and you get the puck going to the other side where there's all kinds of room on the weak side of the zone. So that's how you can effectively use the power play breakout. One other thing, if you use the power play breakout often enough, it opens up other things on the ice. So you can use them later in the game. Here the Colorado Avalanche forget the drop pass, and they stretch the zone. And here the Dallas Stars, they cut the breakout short, and they attack the zone with speed, and they use their speed to make an attempt at the Anaheim Ducks net. So the breakout and the drop pass can set up other breakouts later on. And that's a closer look at the power play breakout. Well, that'll do it for today. I hope that help explains what a power play drop pass breakout is and something to look for the next time your team is on the power play. Don't forget to subscribe to the PHNX YouTube channel. I'm Petey. This has been Petey's Puck Talk, and we'll see you at the rink.